Bitcoin today close below the low of yesterday? If so, that's what we call confirmation of a breakdown. Hello everyone and welcome to The Daily Crypto. We are back with another value-packed video and this time we have Gareth Soloway with us. But before we get into the video, let's see where we are with the fear and greed index for today. As of recording this video, the FNG index is at 23, a slight improvement from yesterday's 21. Currently Bitcoin and Ethereum are trading for 18,900 and 1,342 respectively. Yeah, so I do think there's a little bit more downside, but with the downside comes amazing opportunity for swing traders, for kind of shorter term yeah. position traders. And and so one thing I'd love to show is, is the chart here of Meta. And one of the levels I've isolated down, there's a huge, huge support level around this 133, 132, mm -hmm. and all the way up to about 135. And you can see again, pivot point here, pivot point right here, all the way back here. So as you see, Meta's had this massive decline. Number one, that gets my attention. I say, okay, Meta may be on sale. Maybe the the kind of the emotion is getting too crazy on it. And then I look for those technical levels. So so I, I think the point being here is that, you know, again, who knows where we are December 31st, but if in the next two weeks we were to slam into this level on Meta, I would absolutely be saying, pick some up, buy a little bit, yeah. maybe not a ton, but just, just dip the toe in the water. And I think there's a lot of tech stocks like this out there that have just been crushed. I mean, your list was was very accurate. I mean, AMD, NVIDIA, I mean, all of these type names. In fact, let me go to NVIDIA here real quick and look at NVIDIA's level. It's not that far away from Epic support where this consolidation sideways action was going. That's right. going to be huge support at 120 bucks. So it's, it's maybe a little bit more downside. And then I think you start to see some really interesting opportunities into kind of the, maybe the, the October, November period. With the Fed planning another rate hike, tech stocks are getting crushed left and right. Meta has been trending lower for a long time now, but it's now approaching a key level. Gareth says these prices are great for accumulating for the long term. I mean, I would be so shocked if it was 100. The Fed has been notorious for kind of guiding the market, and the market is telling us 75 is the likely outcome. In addition, I think one of the things that people are forgetting here is that that the, the Fed has started QT in September, which is essentially another way that they're tightening. So even if they do 75 basis points with QT added into it, it's very much the equivalent of 100 basis points. So right. I think, again, the Fed at most is doing 75. I think they have to be so careful here because if they, I mean, think about this, the rate hikes that we've seen already in this one, there's a delayed reaction in the economy. And what happens in three or four months from now, when, when all of a sudden the economy comes crashing down, how does the Fed backtrack? So I think again, a hundred to me is off the table um, because yeah. of QT being in the mix too. Many investors are trying to figure out how much the Fed will increase interest rates by because it will be the deciding factor for where the markets are headed. Gareth Soloway expects them to hike rates by 75 basis points, arguing the 100 points are unlikely given that they are proceeding with QET2. I'm in the longer term camp, and, and I think last time I was on it, we talked a little bit about the potential that we could actually see the market go sideways for 10 years, much like the dot-com collapse did until the NASDAQ took out its highs. And I think, I think that's important to think about because if you look at how has the market gotten out of every big drop in the last 10, 12, 15 years, right. and the answer is the Fed has printed us out. Well, now you take a situation where of inflation, let's say, is at 4% or 5% in the next year. How does the Fed print us out of that? And I think I'd liken people to take a look at the Hang Seng chart, the Brazilian stock market chart. They had these massive runs around 2006, 2007, and those charts are, have gone sideways since then, and they have never taken out those highs. And I think that could be what we're looking at, mainly because, again, the Fed, by printing so much money, pulled forward a lot of that upside growth. And now we have to kind of pay for it by this longer consolidation digestion. Gareth believes this period of consolidation will last for a long time before we see new highs. This is because the Fed already took away the upside potential earlier by printing trillions of dollars, which now have to be taken out of the system by increasing interest rates. This will definitely affect the markets and in a negative way. So the big thing to recognize on Bitcoin here is that you basically have been hovering just above or just below the 
the 2017 highs. So I'm going to bring up a trend line here and we're going to go all the way back to those 2017 highs and put in this line here. And you can see that the market has just been hammering on this over and over again since June so many times. Now the kicker is, and you can see Bitcoin's actually come back amazingly well today, but what we saw yesterday was a close below. And what you look for here is a secondary close below the low of the first candle that closed below. And I know that sounds okay. complex, but basically what needs to happen here is you're looking to see, does Bitcoin today close below the low of yesterday? If so, that's what we call confirmation of a breakdown. Now, if you look here, never happened. If we go over yep. here, never happened, never happened, never happened. So for me, it's, it's the difference maker between a confirmation signal telling us that it's a real breakdown versus a lot of games that algos play to stop people out. So you'll see a close mm -hmm. below a level because then shorts pile on board and then people stop out of their long positions and then the institutional algos rip it the other way. Once you confirm, that's very rarely, that very rarely occurs. So here's, I mean, I'm watching this like a hawk. Basically, yeah. do we close today above or below 13, 19,400? And right now it looks like a game time decision. Gareth says this is the final moment for Bitcoin as it is dangling by a thread at this point. If we get a confirmation on the daily chart by a candle close below the previous candle, a breakdown will be confirmed and the next support will be tested at 17,500. If we break below it too, then Bitcoin will free fall till 12 to 13,000 range. Yeah, so Ethereum, we did see that kind of sell off after the merge right here. It has come down, but it's in all fairness, it's still holding one of my key levels that I'm following this 12, uh, 1250 level. And again, you got very, very close to it in the overnight before we mm -hmm. reverse now. So basically, I would be looking for that level to hold. If that holds, you could see Ethereum start to push up. Here's a beautiful trend line where, where it's going to be. If we yeah. push up, you'll see resistance right there. Um, if it gets through that, then you could be looking at the 200 moving average which is basically right around this double top right here. I'm in the camp where you might bounce back to this trend line, but I do still think there's more downside to go in the near term or over the next week, couple weeks, at least retesting the double bottom here. There is a bullish scenario for Ethereum, but the chances of it playing out depend on Bitcoin's price action. If it remains stable, then we might see Ethereum touching the 2000 mark, but Gareth says it makes more sense for it to retest the recent lows first. So, so in a weird way, and maybe this is from my stock background, but I'm yeah. not that worried about it. Um, in fact, I actually kind of want it just to get, get it done with Gary Gensler, get your butt in here, <laughs> give us these rules and let, yeah. let Ethereum figure it out. Because again, I mean, if we all want Bitcoin to hit a half million dollars or a million dollars, the only way that's happening, you, you know, you could say, I want so many people to adopt it around the world fine. But when you only have 10000 or $1,000 in some of these other countries, it's going to be hard to drive Bitcoin or Ethereum up to crazy levels. What do you need? You need big institutional money. And big institutional yeah. money is not touching these things with a 10-foot pole until they figure out the rules. And think about what a security is. A security reports earnings, okay, but they, they have to file reporting. They have to abide by strict regulations. They can't do shady things. They get in trouble for that. I mean, is it really that bad? I mean, maybe it is, but at least it gives you clarity. And I think that's so important. So, like, you know, if Ethereum is a security, tell us. Let them figure it out. Let them file the proper paperwork and then let's freaking buy it and watch it run up because it's going to go yeah. when that happens. <laughs> Gary Gensler, the head of the SEC, has declared that Ethereum is a security and not a commodity. To be fair, he does have a valid point, but Ethereum is a digital asset of the modern world and trying to apply the same old rules to it is not justifiable. However, Gareth believes this is actually a good thing since Ethereum developers will have to comply with the necessary framework and will ultimately attract institutional investors. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that with regulation and the clarity, I think you will see those coins probably move up as well. Um, again, the longer this kind of haziness goes on, the more these coins are going to get hampered. Again, it's, it's the same thing as like, you know, if you have a drug company that that we don't know if the FDA is going to approve the drug or not or this or that, you know, investors just don't want to take that risk. And so you get some clarity on it. The FDA approves the drug. Now you can buy it. You know, it's going to be a home run down the line. I think that's what Ethereum has done here with the merge. It's just we need this clarity. And I think these other coins can do very, very well as well, assuming they keep up to date on their technology, right? That's my only fear about certain things like Solana and 
Avalanche and others is that they have to maintain that superiority and speed. And if others come along, they could get bumped down the list in terms of crypto market cap. Regulation gives that extra confidence to the institutional investors because they can be sure of what they are getting into. Once the SEC lays out proper guidelines, we will see a huge inflow of capital into the crypto market. Yeah, I definitely do, right? So I, I think that you know, number one, we get through the midterms. I think that's when this framework is going to be released. So I, I'm kind of looking at that late November, early December period when we'll start to get some clarity on that. And I do think other countries will follow suit, right? I mean, the SEC is kind of looked at as being the golden goose of, of, of regulation and everyone else will follow that. And I think the same thing with ETFs. I mean, there's a reason why we haven't seen the approval of a Bitcoin ETF yet. It's because the SEC hasn't approved it based on the fact that there's too many gray areas for these cryptocurrencies. So look for that to happen as well. I mean, I think I think this is the kind of the exciting thing for me with crypto is that once we get the regulation, I think the dominoes start to fall and you actually could get a significant bottom in you know, at that point in cryptocurrency when you have this kind of clarity. According to Gareth, we might have some framework ready by December this year, and when the US embraces it, other countries will follow soon. Same goes with Bitcoin ETFs. As soon as we have a spot ETF for Bitcoin, we will see crypto adoption continue to rise. Thank you for watching this video. Please drop a like and subscribe to our channel to stay updated with the latest market news and events. See you guys in the next one.